<laughs> well, good afternoon. Yes, my website is back online, and I'll report that before I'll get into today's, today's video, since that was what knocked me for a loop and took the wind out of my sail yesterday, just before I was ready to do the video. I got a call last night from, um, just as I was getting ready to go to bed, from my friend who is on vacation in India and handles my website. He's the one that created it many years ago now. In any case, he had just awakened. He's on vacation in India, and uh, he had just gotten out of bed and gotten my message that uh, the website had gone down. Uh, within a half an hour, he had it back up, and it turns out that when my website was hacked a couple weeks ago, uh, it was put on some kind of a list, and when the, uh, the owners of the server the server people got a hold of that list as my website being a bad website they uh, disabled it they took it down uh, and when my friend talked to them and explained what had happened they did a uh, actually scanned my my website found out that it was uh, that it didn't have any viruses in it though actually it had one they said and they removed it uh, and my website was safe and, and put back online. So that was good news. It was down for several hours, but uh, it could have been a lot worse. Anyway, <laughs> I give you that update because, because I made such a big deal out of that yesterday, and it sort of, as I said, took the wind out of my sail. Today, the title is, If Not Now, When? If Not Us, Who? Lots of people talk about the now moment living in the present. Many are familiar with the saying, we're the ones we've been waiting for. Yet so many people, when I suggest optimism regarding real change in our world, say, it won't happen in our lifetime. <laughs> These same people do not choose to get involved in taking action to draw attention to the problems we face or to create solutions. The truth is, as I see it, many repeat the popular spiritual sayings, even though they do not really believe them. They simply go along with the current cliches because that seems like the thing to do. For me, I really do think the time to create real changes is real change is now. And we really are the ones with the opportunity to create those changes that will impact life on earth for everyone. Please don't allow yourself to deflect our responsibility to take action by thinking it will be a generation to come, some future time that things will finally get better. Now is the time, and we are the ones. <laughs> I truly, truly am optimistic when I see all the things that I look at in the world, and I see all the wonderful visionaries and all the wonderful people, some that I know and some that I only know about and some that I'm just getting to know that are working on real solutions, solutions that will affect not only the monetary system, not only the legal system, not only the system of governance, not only the system of, of corporate or not corporate, but uh, commerce, but they will it will affect farming, it will affect the chemtrails, it will affect the environment, it will affect animals, it will in fact uh, uh, yeah, affect human rights. Everything, there are people working on every conceivable problem you and I might think of, and even some that we wouldn't think of. People are aware of certain things and working on solutions, and this is heartening to me filling me with great hope and great expectation that our future really is bright, that there really is peace on earth possible, not in some future generation, but right now in our generation. I don't know what it's going to take to get the powers that have had these grandiose designs of ruling the world with an iron fist to capitulate. I don't know what it's going to take to get them to totally stop the nonsense, stop the insanity, and transform the, their, their sociopathy and psychopathy, but it's going to happen. I don't have to know how. 
and I'm not going to be neutral about that. That's what has to happen. You've got to get rid of the insane people running the, running the asylum called Earth and put some sane people in there that understand that, they, that people that lead take on a responsibility not to dominate, but to serve the people, to serve the highest good. That's what leadership is about. It's not about controlling others. It's not about being an authoritarian. It's about being a servant. And when humanity gets that through our collective head <laughs> and into our mind and more importantly into our heart, we won't allow, I mean, we will laugh at people that want to be the boss and control others. We will laugh at them. It will be such nonsense and such insanity, and we will recognize it because we will also come into a place where we will recognize that we really do have the value, that it really is and always has been us. We are the ones that keep any system going. It's been a slavery system, and it's operated because you and I have been ignorant of our essence. We've been ignorant of our reality. We've been ignorant of the game that we're involved in. We've had our, our eyes closed to the matrix so that we couldn't even see what was going on around us. Or if we saw it, we wouldn't understand it and it would just be confusing. And so we would tried to escape. And when people that have been brainwashed in this system, programmed by the matrix, are told that it can be something else. The first reaction, the first reaction, my first reaction when I was told how, how loans work, my first reaction was, that's nuts. What do you mean they don't lend money? What do you mean they never lent me anything? I mean, that doesn't make any sense at all. I didn't have any money. And I needed money and I went to them and they gave me a check to get what I wanted or gave me a credit card or, or gave me whatever to, to buy the car, to buy the house, to buy the things that I needed. What do you mean they didn't give me money? It didn't make sense. Why? Because I was brainwashed. Because I was programmed to see it a certain way. And that's how it is with the whole world. We've been programmed to see things a certain way. But the programming is being... <laughs> is being unprogrammed or, or whatever, however you would want to say that word, we are being given another program, another option. That's what CVACs are all about. It replaces the corporate structure. Corporation is a dead body. That's what, it comes from corpse. Corporations are dead. No wonder they've been foreclosed upon by the One People's Public Trust. No wonder the one people now are becoming empowered and, and awakening all over the world. If not now, when? If not us, who? We are the ones that are getting the message. Now, there's some people that don't want to get the message still. There's a lot of people that still don't want to get the message because you've been programmed. You've been programmed to believe lies. You've been programmed to believe things are a certain way, and they're not really that way. Banks don't lend money. That's the big one. The monetary system is the big one. That's where all of the prison, all of the slavery comes out of the monetary system. Slaves without knowing the slaves. We're giving just enough freedom to think we're free, but we're in bondage always chasing the dollar, always chasing a way to pay our debt, always encouraged to create new debt so that we can continuously be kept in bondage to people that are scamming us, defrauding us, taking our value. It's our value. We are the ones with our signature, with our creativity, with our labor, with our love, with our being. We are the ones that have value. And it's always been that way. Even if you, even if you consider yourself a pauper, even if you're in a third world country and you have to scrape by and beg to get, get, to get enough food to eat, when you understand, when you see the reality of the world, there is no lack. That's artificially created. That's the illusion that has been created in the matrix to enslave us to a system where we remain ignorant. That was the plan.
The plan was to keep the human race ignorant. That's why the chemtrails are in the air. That's why they put va viruses in the vaccines and in the medications. That's why they put to genetically modify our food and put poisons in our very food that we eat. It's all to keep us hurting in some way or another, to keep us in a place where we are so consumed by just staying alive, by just making ends meet, that we don't have time to, to experiment and to, and to explore to find out who we really are and how much power we really have. However, there are people that are really, truly, this is the beautiful thing, that are really, truly leaders that are serving the highest good by making people aware of the problem, aware of solutions, and most importantly, aware of who we are. We are the ones we've been waiting for. The time is now. This is when we have the opportunity to change everything. It's not tomorrow's generation. It's this generation. It's right now, 2013. We don't have to wait till next year. We don't even have to wait till next month for some things. Things are unfolding at a very rapid pace. Now, I, I'll give you this. There are still some people that are going to put in a lot of resistance. But the resistance is going to be diminished proportionately to the amount of people, especially people that that think they're awake, but are saying, it's not going to happen in my lifetime. It's going to happen some other time. It's not, it's not me. I, that's not my job. If, if we would stop saying that, if people would stop saying that, and we would all say together, we can do it. We can do it, and we can do it now. We would do it now. We wouldn't have to wait till tomorrow, till some future time. We could do it right now, today. We could accomplish it. If the whole world, if every, if everybody in the 99%, and it's really probably a, bi a, a bigger percentage than that, would just say stop to the powers that want to control everything, to the men and some women that just want to rule over other people. They get their kicks at, at making other people suffer and making other people march to their, to their command. Bark! Hum! Yes, ma yes, Massa. Yes, Massa. What do you want, Massa? Huh? You know what? You, you get the message that I'm trying to tell you. If we would just wake up and tell them no, no more. We don't have to hate them. We don't have to fight them. We just have to say no. And we just have to say, I'm powerful. I'm able to do something now that will contribute to the betterment of everyone, including myself, including me. I can take control of my own life, take responsibility for me, and I don't need you anymore. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We can make it very peaceful in the transition. It doesn't have to be hard. The faster we wake each other up and wake up ourselves and take responsibility now, now, and we think in terms of now, not just as some ideal that we really don't believe, but now, the present moment, now, what am I going to do now to take charge of my life, to stop believing lies, to start learning the truth? What am I going to do now to recognize who I am? Am I going to call out to whatever we call the higher power, whether it's God or Great Spirit or, or whatever, or universe or, or whatever? Now we have the opportunity to totally transform life on this planet, including our own life. We have the power to change our DNA. How? By talking to it. Did you ever think of such a thing? that your cells are conscious and that you can talk to them? Did you ever think of such a thing that the elements around you are conscious and can respond? Not just water. We know that from Dr. Emoto, that water responds to emotion. We know from the life of plants, I think that's the name of it, that plants have consciousness. They respond to emotion. 
animals respond to emotion. But did you know minerals and crystals and, and everything responds to emotion? What is emotion? It's energy. And when you put forth creative energy and speak, I am, speak as someone who is a creator instead of a victim, the earth around you, the elements around you, the atoms around you dance for joy because all of a sudden now they can cut that they can move in to the higher the higher orbiting plane. They can get really, really excited and they can start fulfilling their divine mission that was given to them long ago. But they've had to serve according to our consciousness. And now our consciousness is being raised so that we're not putting it off. We're not we're not saying tomorrow anymore. We're saying today I'm gonna do it. Today I'm going to take control of my own life. Today, I'm going to take responsibility. Today, I'm going to talk to my body. I'm going to talk to the, to the cells that are diseased. I'm going to thank them for the contribution that they're making in my awakening. I'm going to talk to the elements that look like everything is breaking down. And I'm going to thank them for reminding me that I have power, that I have an opportunity to transform this into something that serves the higher good. And don't think that the elements don't get excited about that. The elements do get excited. All of our cells do get excited. And we will lick disease. There's no incurable disease. There is no insoluble problem. There is nothing that we can't do if we will only get out of our own way and stop putting it off till tomorrow and stop saying, let somebody else do it. Each of us can do something right now, even if it's just one little step, we can take one little step today in taking back control of our own lives and in choosing to serve one another. That's the next step. But first, it's taking control of our own life individually, and then it's serving each other collectively that will transform the world. Now is the time, and we are the ones. Thank you for listening. Namaste.